Thank you, Sharon. Uh, I really hate to admit, I don't think I have one relative in Kentucky. <laughs> I was waiting for her to call my name. <clears throat> By the way, those folks clear in the back over there, can you hear me? Raise your hand. Okay, how about those straight in the back? Can you hear me? Raise your hand. How about those over there? Can you hear me? Okay. The reason I asked is the other day I was given a speech and I was just getting started. I was about three minutes into it and I thought I was doing pretty good. And someone way in the back goes, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> and before I could adjust the microphone or anything, all the people in the front went to the back. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm just warning you all, they can hear me everywhere in this room. There's nowhere to go. You can't hide. What's that? You can run, but you can't hide. It is good to be here. It's always an honor when I'm invited to uh, present at this conference. It's a very special conference, one of our largest. And it's a way we honor a very important group of people who are our members. But more importantly, how we honor what they do. And I hope you realize that I'm simply the warm-up act to the real party tonight. And that, is, of course, is naming the 2013 NEA ESP of the Year. So, and I've got to talk fast because in six minutes, people are going to start dancing right here. I, the dance starts at nine. Uh, I, uh, first of all, would acknowledge this head table, Laura, Becky, and Sharon. To my right, well, Earl, I don't know if I should honor you or not after what you did to Sharon. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's, he's her cousin from Kentucky. <laughs> and he knows how to say Earl Wyman. <laughs> and Christy and Princess and Paul and, of course, Lily. Um, it's, uh, it's good to be up here with so many great people. And to the, in the audience, uh, first-timers, raise your hand. I didn't see the number. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. And to that very special group of people, the emerging leaders, the new leaders, who went through the training, raise your hands. All right. That's special. Uh, there are a lot of things I could talk about, but we've run out of time. <laughs> but I actually thought about all the things I could talk about, what's going on in Congress and the results of the sequester and this horrible horrible deal that's being cut and the impact it's going to have on kids and people in this country who need help the most. But I decided I didn't want to talk about those things tonight. I, uh, I wanted to talk about you. I wanted to talk about the people in this room. And I really like the theme for this year's conference, ESP. It's not a job. It's, it's more than a job. It's a career. And it's not just any career. It's a career in education. And that in and of itself makes it incredibly unique. I often say this to reporters and others that I know not one of our three million members in NEA went into education so they could be a member of NEA. Think about that. No one was growing up and saying, you know, I really want to be a member of NEA. I guess I'll take a job in education. That's, that's not how it worked. There was something else deep inside them that said, I'm going to into education because. And for our education support professionals, when we ask that in polling question, over 90% give the same answer because they want to make a positive difference with kids. And see, the people outside of our organization do not understand this common, this passion and commitment that binds us all together. All of the adults who work in education, from pre-K to graduate school, regardless of your job title or what your responsibilities are day in and day out, what binds us together is this commitment and belief about what ought to happen to every child in America. And you know what's so sad when we say those words is that it's never happened. Not in this country, not in any country in the world. Never in the history of the world has any society or country 
actually lived up to the ideals that seem to be thrown out so freely. And this organization, not only does that passion bind us together, but we define ourselves by that passion. See, when you talk about our mission statement, a mission statement isn't something you hang on the wall. It's a statement of why you exist. Anytime you form a new organization, you have to decide what it's for. Why are we creating an organization? And this one has been around since 1857, 156 years, but just as recent as 2006, we looked at ourselves closely and said, let's define in today's words and in today's world why we exist as an organization. What is it that we want to do each and every day with over three million people who work in schools all across this country? And we said it's to advocate for professionals and that is a noble part of our mission. There is nothing that will happen in this country without unions. All of the things we have were not the result of benevolent CEOs. It was by common working people saying we demand respect, honor, and a decent wage for a decent day's work. So to have part of our mission statement, the fact that we believe that we ought to advocate for education professionals is in itself a, a bold statement, but it doesn't end there. It says we also exist to unite our members of the nation to fulfill the promise of public education. Now, I don't know about y'all, but my guess is most of you are more like me in growing up than those folks on Wall Street. I grew up in a town of 1700. There were 51 in my graduating class. And it was a cool, cool place to grow up. We didn't have any money, but we weren't poor. We just didn't have money. But see, it was a society that said, if you have a dream, we're going to try and find a way for you to achieve that dream. And so not only is it something this country believes in and is built on, this organization says that's why we exist, to fulfill the promise of public education. And the fact that in this day and age, in 2013, we're not close to that yet. And it ought to pain every single one of us deep inside that we have not been able to do that. We have millions of kids that do not, on a day-to-day -day basis, have what they need to follow their dreams or to succeed or to be well-educated. And who has a greater responsibility than those of us who chose this career in education as ours? But I want you to know, if I had written that theme, I wouldn't have ended it where it did. See, ESP, it's more than a job. It's a career. It's more than a career. Becky talked about this. It's a profession. It is a profession. Now, in Wikipedia, definition, I looked up what the professional was, and it is someone who, what, where, I wrote this sum down somewhere. Oh, someone who has specialized training, supplies counsel and service to others. But what makes our profession so special is not that we fit that definition, but it is who we provide that service to. See, there's no other entity in the whole world that does what we do. We provide on a day-to-day -day basis what kids need to succeed, to dream, and to do big. And we need to see it as a profession. And we do expect the respect and compensation that goes with that profession. And for those of us in this room who are not education support professionals, we have to do more. Because as Sharon said so eloquently, every single one of us knows. Anyone who has worked in a public school knows that you can't eliminate some of them and make it work. That you gotta have the bus driver to bring the kids to school, they need to serve lunches, but more than that, it's the deep caring that every single one of them have. Every one of the adults 
for kids. That's what brought them into working in education. That's what makes us a special profession. And for the ESP members in the room, you need to do more also. See, just as those of us who are not ESP, we need to tell that story well. We need to describe it in terms of people we know who make a difference with kids. The people that we know on a day-to-day -day basis that without them we could not be successful with the kids if we're a teacher or a counselor or a principal, or it doesn't matter. But you have to do that too. Number one, don't tell people you're important. That's not what you need to say. You need to tell people what you do. You need to talk about the children that you work with. See, they'll know the answer. If they have a better understanding of what you do every day, they'll know. You know, I used to have a wrestler that I coached and God, he had a mouth. And he was always telling everybody how good he was. And I pulled him aside one day and I said, Terry, if you go out in the mat and kick somebody's butt, you won't have to tell them how good you are. They'll know. They'll know. And I already know what you do every single day. You need to talk about what you do with students. There's something else you need to do. You need to feel that inside. Now, I happen to be a teacher, and when I was in college, there was a phrase that I heard over and over, and I hated it. It was, those who can, do. Those who can't, teach. It's hard to describe what that made me feel like. That somehow what I was choosing to do for my adult life was somehow less. See, I think we need a new mug that's on every single one of our desks or work sites. And what it says is, those who can work in education. All others find a less significant line of work. <laughs> and what I'm telling you is you have to feel that inside and you cannot allow anyone ever to take that away from you. No matter what some wacko on the TV or right or someone who writes in a newspaper, no matter what it is they say, do not allow them to take from you who you are and why you come to work every single day. It is too much to give to someone else who doesn't care nearly as deeply as you do. And Becky, I can tell you, I'm not tired. I'm sick and tired. I am sick and tired of all these people on the outside who want to tell us what to do and how to do it, and they couldn't last a day in your shoes. Not a day. And I, and I am sick and tired of only fighting against bad ideas. Because every time we fight another stupid idea, was that the word, right? Another stupid idea, when we win, we stay where we are. And I don't know about you, but I don't think where we are is really that great. I think there's a lot we have to do for kids in education, for professionals who work in education. There is much more we need to do. So the idea you tell me that my life should be complete if I stop bad ideas and stay where I am? No. I want way more than that. I want to fight for things we've never had. And see, then if we don't succeed, we stay where we are. But the potential is to achieve something we've never done before to fulfill the promise of public education for every child. See, I think that's worth fighting for. I think that's worth taking all the energy I have and putting it toward that. I believe it is work worth doing. And if they defeat me, I'll come back again. But I wanna fight for what we do. I want to fight for our professions. I want to own our own professions and tell other people what they need to do to support us in our profession. <laughs> and we need to get to the honorees tonight, so I'm going to close with, uh, I want to just talk about three quick words that I want you to think about. The first one is power. And I know as unionists, sometimes that's seen as negative. 
They talk about us that that union wants power. And sometimes we use that word in that negative way. We call, talk about the rich and the powerful and what they're doing to us. But I want you to know that the word power and what it means by definition has no good or negative connotation. It's just a word. And what it means is the ability to act, to influence, and make a difference. Now, how would anyone not want that? I mean, the opposite of that is to be powerless. Can you think of any situation in your life where you said, gosh, I hope I'm powerless today? Now, that's not what you want. Whether you're talking about your own children, the students that you deal with in school, we always want power, the ability to act, to influence, to make a difference. The second word I want to talk to you or mention is leadership. It was mentioned by Laura that this conference is about leadership. But I want you to understand something very important about leadership. Some people believe that it is a function of position, that you have to be elected to or appointed to some position to be a leader. That is totally false. That is totally false. Leadership can be done and demonstrated in a position that you're elected or appointed to. But by definition, leadership is about behavior. It's about what you do. And there is not a building or work site in America that if I interviewed all of the people on that staff and asked them, who do you go to when you need something done? Who do you respect and others respect on this faculty or on this staff? If there's a big problem, who would you go to to solve it? They will tell me who the leaders are. It is a function of behavior and every single one of you, when you leave this conference, will have more skills and knowledge and connections and relationships with people that you meet, you will have more means of changing your behavior and being a leader. And the third word I want to mention to you is motivation. Gosh, is that one misused? I couldn't tell you how many times as an educator I was asked about motivating students. And my answer is always the same. I've never motivated a student in my life. Because I don't believe motivation comes from the outside. Motivation is something inside you. Whether or not you are moved to action depends on what's inside you. So my greatest hope as an educator is maybe I could touch inside someone's head or in their heart that the idea of getting a good education was their means of going where they wanted to go then I know they would be, quote, motivated. But it's not me motivating them. It's me recognizing what's already inside them that makes them want to do something they haven't done, be something they've not yet been. And my own theory about motivation is that it comes down to a very singular thing, satisfaction level. In the building where you work or your work site, if you look at the wages and the conditions, if you look what are happening to kids in your school district, if you're satisfied with the way things are, you're not going to demonstrate leadership. You're not going to be motivated because the way it is, is okay. I'm telling you that if it must be inside you that the dissatisfaction of the status quo just, you can't take it. It starts deep down inside, and it's like you just start shaking. You can't sit still because something has to change. And when you feel that deep down inside, you will be motivated. And you will demonstrate leadership because you will not be able to stop until what you aspire to has been accomplished. So use this conference. The most important day of this conference is Monday. It's a day when it's over and you've gone home. And if every single person in this room behaves in the same way on Monday as you did on Wednesday before you came,
then we will have failed. We will have failed to teach you something you need to know, to touch something inside you that says, I need to do more about changing what's happening to children in America and the professionals who spend their lives working with them. We will have failed. So when you leave this conference, I want you to be dissatisfied. I want you to be dissatisfied way down inside. In fact, I want you gloriously dissatisfied. I want you to go back home and you can't wait to do something. And you're going to send that email to Becky. You will, won't you? Are you going to send an email to Becky? You better. And I want you to not only to raise your hand, I want you to stand up and shout out. I want you to do something and to change what is in America right now and to believe that you have the responsibility, the skill, the knowledge, and everything you need to make it happen. So ESP members of the 2013 conference, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Raise your hand and say, I am ready. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Let's get to the good part of this conference.